service pack, um, you know, loading up 2015, um, there's some things that you should uh, know about and watch out for uh, during that upgrade. Um, but I also wanted to kind of make it a little bit more general as well um, for just, you know, upgrades for SolidWorks generally. Um, I find that uh, when, I, when I speak with a lot of our customers, uh, they're a little hesitant about upgrading to the latest version. So, and I, I'm starting to hear kind of these conversations now as 2016 beta uh, has just been released. Um, and many of our customers want to wait uh, and push that off. But it's a lot of really great um, enhancements in 2016. So if we kind of demystify this upgrade process for our customers, uh, we find that they're able to uh, jump into that latest uh, annual release more quickly. And they're able to be more productive because of it. So. Uh, the way that I'll probably that I'm going to that I format this uh, is to just do some of the 2015 upgrade um, information up front, and then have some general information uh, on the back end. So um, again, this is me, Mark Peterson, uh, out of the uh, Atlanta office here, and uh, you can go to our Trimec website for more information, like Dana said, or you can uh, send me an email or or give me a call if you have any questions about this particular webinar. Uh, the agenda for today is going to be looking at a some of the things we should look out for in the 2015 upgrade process, including uh, errors with the symbol library, um, some issues that we see with custom properties, uh, some corruption on our files when we save them, uh, incorrect cut lists in 2015, and then we'll move on to some more uh, general information like uh, license manager errors, toolbox errors, Windows installation errors, uh, media location issues that you might see, a blank installation manager, um, and even talk about some graphics card support. And at the very end of the, the, the webinar, I'll, ha I'll have some uh, information regarding uh, where you can get some more information from some SolidWorks resources. So let's go ahead and get started uh, with the symbol library. Now, you may see something like this error pop up on your screen uh, after uh, doing a, a SolidWorks upgrade in 2015. Uh, this particular error looks a little cryptic and is talking about uh, some kind of symbol library file and that you know something is wrong. Typically when we see this it's uh, usually caused by a what we call a side-by-side -side configuration uh, which is where we install multiple releases uh, of SolidWorks side-by-side. Uh, -side. So we might see SolidWorks 2014 and 2015 installed at the same time. Many of our customers like this capability of SolidWorks because they may have some customers or suppliers that uh, still are working in an older release of SolidWorks, but they want to be able to uh, support some of their other customers and suppliers which have already moved on to the newest release. So um, as a side note, this is only available in annual releases. So for example, you couldn't do a side-by-side -side configuration of 2015 Service Pack 0 and 2015 Service Pack 2. That's not necessarily allowed. So, um, However, if depending on how this side-by-side uh, -side configuration is installed, uh, you could run into some errors like the symbol library problem, or even errors with uh, your default template locations, whole wizard callouts, and that sort of thing. So if you've seen these errors, um, then the reason is because when you have SolidWorks installed side-by-side, -side, they're actually going to require the use of the same system resources in many cases. And so if those system resources are already used up in uh, one of the annual releases of SolidWorks being run, then it can't be used again um, for a second, uh, second, you know, SolidWorks installation. So we may see these issues. Uh, there are ways that we can go into the registry and kind of fix this and brute force uh, fix it. But the resolution that I find um, that I'm most successful with is to completely uninstall the latest or just the newest revision uh, of SolidWorks. Um, and then reinstall it to make sure uh, that everything is cleaned out. And when you do reinstall it, we want to separate um, or give our folder locations a good distinction between the old release and the new release. And the way that we would do that, first of all, the uninstall procedure, we go to our control panel, add remove programs, select the SolidWorks uh, release that we'd like to uninstall and choose uninstall. Then from there, we can uh, go through the, the regular wizard, the uninstallation wizard, selecting the items that we want to install, and most importantly, click Change at this window. When we click on the Change uh, link there, we get another window that allows us to select what we actually want to remove from our computer. So you have some options there, program files and folders, registry entries, data files and folders, and download files and folders. I would highly recommend for uh, you know 
for this solution to definitely check the box next to data files and folders and you may even want to choose registry entries as well. Once the uninstall of the old of the newest release is complete, uh, then we can go back in and reinstall it. Um, it's always important when we're reinstalling to make sure that we, we follow prerequisites, that we uh, try to temporarily disable antivirus, uh, firewall, and user account control settings, and uh, that we're also running it with an administrative account. Okay, so we can right-click on our setup exe file in our SolidWorks installation media directory and choose to run as administrator. From there, we'll just go through the same installation screens that we're used to seeing, um, however you typically do those, and, and then throwing your uh, serial numbers in there. It's going to connect to the SolidWorks server, um, and then it's going to ask you what products you want to select. All these things are normal. Okay. But um, where we want to pay close attention to is, especially for side-by-side -side installations, is this summary screen. And the summary screen gives us the capability to actually change our installation locations. So for example, we can see here, uh, highlighted in red, the installation location, C program files, SolidWorks Corp. And then the toolbox whole wizard option, C colon slash SolidWorks data. Um, if I were installing SolidWorks 2015 as a side-by-side -side configuration, it would make a lot of sense for me to go ahead and change those locations by appending the SolidWorks version to the end of it. So we can see C Program Files, SolidWorks Corp 2015, and C SolidWorks Data 2015. When we do this uh, and you know install the SolidWorks software, then click on Finish, then we shouldn't see the symbol library issues uh, any longer. One last note about the installation manager. Um, I always encourage our customers to join the customer experience improvement program. Um, many people will choose no because they think that it will probably help them with uh, their computer performance. Um, but that's actually not the case. The, the customer experience program, improvement program uh, creates the log files in the background uh, whether or not you choose to join uh, the program or not. So there isn't necessarily any performance improvement. Um, and it does actually really help out uh, the uh, research and development team at SolidWorks um, to understand, you know, things like how far are we moving our mouse cursor uh, to make to click on certain objects and that sort of thing. So it really does help out and could give us some performance benefits in the future. All right. So moving on to the the next uh, issue that we'll see here uh, in a 2015 specific installation is an issue with custom properties, specifically a date type custom property. So you'll see here in this screenshot that the date is set to 1-1-1800. Um, it may look like 1-1-1800 or 1-1-1700, or you may find that every time you save your file and close it and then open it back up, it's, uh, it, it's today's date but minus one, for example. So. Uh, in early versions of the 2015 installation, we found some issues with this date type for our custom properties. The cause, um, uh, well, is just some, some programming glitches, basically. And it affects uh, all 2015 SP0 installations, specifically ones uh, that are installed on computers with a time zone setting of UTC GMT. So uh, any of those computers will be affected. Um, the resolution for this particular error is um, is found in the knowledge base S-067708. You can search that number in the knowledge base and you'll find uh, what I'm referring to here. But ultimately what we need to do is update to a version equal to or greater than uh, SP1.1. So that's where the fix is located. Uh, other than that, I'm not familiar with a, a workaround besides actually just going ahead and updating to SP1.1 or greater. Okay. Um, you'll notice that, you know, if you haven't done that yet, you probably would have seen this screen here uh, when you open up SolidWorks. And uh, this is letting you know that there's a critical fix for SP0 that uh, came out. So it um, gives you a little bit more information, shows you a link to the knowledge base solution. So um, most people have probably seen this and uh, went ahead and upgraded SP1.1 already. All right. Um, corruption on save. So I don't have uh, a screenshot for the corruption on save uh, issue um, in here. I could have sworn I did. My, my apologies. But um, the corruption on save issue, um, 
it, it can actually be kind of various, but the effect is basically that whenever you perform a save operation in uh, SOLIDWORKS 2015 installations up to SP 2.1, um, the operation may not actually save a complete file. So it, it kind of stops saving at a certain point, and that may result in some file corruption. When you try to open that file, SOLIDWORKS will give you an error window, and it says that it's uh, invalid or, or some, something along those lines. Um, so there is a service pack uh, or a, a SPR related to this resolution as well. Um, and again, the solution is to update to SP 2.1 or greater. All right. Oh, here it is. Excuse me. I just put it in the wrong order. So this is a, an example of what that corruption on save file might look like. It'll say the file is not valid or it's locked or something like that. So if you do see anything like this, of course, it would be best to go ahead and upgrade to SP 2.1. Now, with these two previous issues, um, Service Pack 4 is out right now. So I would actually recommend just going ahead and going all the way up to Service Pack 4 if you do plan on, if you are at anything below Service Pack 2.1 currently. Um, okay, another example of an issue that we see in a 2015 related installation is incorrect cut lists. So here's an example of a, a weld mint that has been put together and thrown into a drawing. And you'll notice here in the cut list that there are some lengths. The first four items have the same exact length, although we can tell item number one is relatively long. It's that left-hand side of the weldment. Um, whereas item number two is definitely not the same length. So we can tell just visually that something is very wrong here with this particular cut list. We find that this issue is, is caused in 2015 installations um, when the descriptions are the same uh, between the different items or when we might use a quotation mark. So in this particular example, we see both are happening here. The description is the same, that description being pulled from the Wellman profile, and uh, that description happens to have uh, dual quotation marks in it. So this, uh, this becomes an error because a, an enhancement that was added in 2015 was the ability to rename our cut list items automatically with the uh, Wellman profile descriptions. This is a great enhancement, but for some people, um, it, it has messed up the calculation for the length of their um, cut lists. So the resolution here, again, there's another um, SPR in the knowledge base that I've referenced. Um, you can do one of the following. You can upgrade to a version equal to or greater than uh, 2015 SP4 uh, to make sure that you won't have this problem. Or you can go into the uh, tools, options, and document properties, and weldments, and uncheck rename cut list folder with description property value. So you can see that highlighted in red here in this screenshot. Unchecking this box will, will and then clicking OK, of course, will solve the problem. And so we'll see that if we go back to the drawing after unchecking the box, all of our cut list lengths and so forth will be updated properly. All right, let's continue to move on here. So uh, those are most of the, the big issues that we found with the 2015 installations uh, specifically. Now, the rest of the uh, installation um, er, er, issues that, we, that we've seen uh, may not be 2015 specific, but they could be more general and related to a 2014 or a 2013 install as well. One of the first ones I'll attack here is for the license manager. So in some cases, uh, you may see an error like this when you try to load up SOLIDWORKS, and it'll tell you that it can't obtain a license, and it gives you some random string of numbers in parentheses. Um, so I have two examples of this. They're relatively the same error. Um, ultimately, it's giving us an indication that we need to update the SNL server. So this typically will occur when the client machine is using a network license. Then the the client machine uh, was updated to a new, newer version of SOLIDWORKS before the server was updated to that same version of SOLIDWORKS. So they, they did the installation in the uh, wrong order. So the appropriate way to install the software is to go to the license server first and then update that to the latest version, and then you can update all the clients from there. Okay. So the resolution for this is to update the Solid Network License Manager 
and the update process is very straightforward. Um, on the server, go ahead and return any borrowed licenses. Close SolidWorks on all client machines. Stop the SNL manager service. Transfer the licenses so they can be used again. Close the uh, SNL manager and update it using your installation media. And then once the installation is complete, uh, choose to activate or reactivate the licenses. In many cases, I find that uh, step six is the one that is missed. So this actually could, this whole uh, six step procedure could be pared down to just one step, which is just to go back to the license manager and reactivate the license. All right. Following up with this is some toolbox errors, and we'll see some issues here with toolbox after we get done with a, an upgrade where it'll say you can't find the standards database or the database file is not the expected version. Um, there are a variety of these different types of, of errors, um, and one of the one of the things that uh, you know this points us to is that during the in, in upgrade process the toolbox wasn't uh, upgraded fully or maybe it was interrupted or the toolbox wasn't checked to be installed or upgraded at all. So when we find these errors, typically what we do is um, we'll manually upgrade the toolbox uh, by performing these steps here. Um, first, we'll, we'll back up the SolidWorks data directory. Um, that's where the toolbox is located. Then we'll run the, data box, uh, the database converter tool um, if it needed to be converted. We can run the update browser database exe tool, and then we can also uh, run the SLD toolbox updater tool. And the way that this looks is, um, let's say I have a 2014 uh, SolidWorks data uh, folder. I'm going to go ahead and take that and put it somewhere. I'm going to back it up maybe on a, a removable USB drive or something just to keep it safe in case any of the updating that I do uh, messes with the installation or the update of the toolbox. All right, from there, I'll go back to where that is located under the C drive, SolidWorks data, and I'm going to rename that. And I just want to rename it something uh, to, that would make more sense uh, for my latest installation. So maybe uh, change it to SolidWorks data 2015, for example. Um, then from there, I need to browse to this directory. It would be C, Program Files, SolidWorks Corp, SolidWorks, toolbox, and then data utilities. This is the location where I'm going to find the database converter exe tool and the update browser database tool. We'll run both of these tools as uh, administrator. Um, and you know all we need to do is just find the source database file. We're looking for swbrowser.mdb here. And that should be located under the newly renamed SOLIDWORKS data folder, Lang English. Okay. And then for the destination, you can just uh, you know keep it as default. Once that's complete, you hit convert, and it'll convert uh, the database if necessary. The next step is to in that same directory, the data utilities directory, right-click on update browser database.exe and choose to run that as administrator. This is a very similar tool. Again, we'll just browse to the database that needs to be updated. Okay, it'll tell us what the old version is, what the new version is, and then you know we just need to choose where the update is. So again, these are all inside uh, those same directories. Once we're done with that, we click on update. It'll update the toolbox to the newest version, and then we're set. The final step here, step four, is to run the SLD toolbox updater exe tool. That's located under C, Program Files, SolidWorks Corp, and SolidWorks. We just right click on it, run as administrator one more time. That will open up uh, the toolbox updates uh, tool. We just specify again where the toolbox should be located. Um, or I'm sorry, we, we point it to where the uh, resources are for our installation. Uh, so if that's the DVD, you can point it to the DVD media. If that's a location on your hard drive, you can point it to there. If you've downloaded it from the customer portal, for example. And then you just choose process. And after processing, uh, you can try opening up the toolbox again. That should resolve your errors. OK. Uh, let's continue on. So we have um, some other errors that we call WI errors or Windows installer errors. These errors have more to do with um, Windows more than, more than SOLIDWORKS itself. Um, but we, 
we can we can approach those um, in a couple ways. So you may see an error like this, error 1719 or error 1603. Um, they have a lot of different four-digit codes for these errors, and it'll give you some kind of cryptic information, and it doesn't really give you many options after that. So ultimately, the cause here is it's just due to some various issues with the Windows operating system. Um, there, are, there are a lot of different errors, and so there's there's not one single cause for any of these uh, errors. Um, the resolution here would be to check out some of the resources um, here to get a little bit more information. One of the best ones would be the SolidWorks Installation FAQ website. Um, if I just click on that here, it'll open us up. We can see uh, the installation website. And the first thing that this FAQ answers is some information about these SolidWorks Windows installation error codes. And so we can see the Windows installation error code as well as the knowledge base article that's associated with it. So this, this is actually a, a really great place to go to find this information. Other resources would include, include the Microsoft Windows uh, error code website, um, the SolidWorks knowledge base via the customer portal. Um, and if you still can't find the resolution you're looking for, um, you know, just like with anything here, you can always contact uh, your uh, reseller's technical support. All right. Media location. So in some cases when we're trying to upgrade, um, let's say, to from Service Pack 0 to Service Pack 4 of, of 2015, uh, you may get an, uh, a pop-up here at the product selection page after you hit Next where it says locate the installation files for SolidWorks 2015, et cetera. And it says insert disk one if you have a DVD. So, um, and again, this isn't necessarily 2015 related. This, this is anywhere. But what's happening here is that SolidWorks was installed with a particular uh, location for that uh, source data, for that media. If it was the DVD, um, the SolidWorks installation manager is going to go and, and try to look for that DVD inside the uh, DVD tray. Um, if you're, if it was located as a, a download on your hard drive somewhere, it'll go back to that same location. So the obvious solution here would be to go to browse um, to to fix the problem. Um, oh, sorry. Let me talk about the cause here real quick. So installation media can't be found in its original location. There is an, a, a knowledge base article that speaks to this. It says during an upgrade. Windows installer needs the original installation location or CD to access distributed files. To verify the installed files, to repair files, to access DLLs, to update drivers, so on and so forth. And so it, it needs those original files um, to continue. The resolution here is that we can actually just browse for that location. And hopefully uh, you'll still have that location available. Uh, if you don't, then, you know, it's possible that you could, you know, get uh, another DVD, or you could download the information from the customer portal um, and try to point to that. Um, the only caveat to that, and the only, uh, the only thing that would get in your way is that the directory structures much must match between the two locations that you started with and the one that you're going to browse to. So the DVDs, in many cases, don't match the directory structure of the downloads. So it may not be possible to interchange those. So your mileage may vary using using the little browse button here. Okay. Let's talk about uh, one other thing. Again, this may not be SolidWorks 2015 related. Um, as you can see here, my screenshot shows a, a 2014 um, installation manager trying to update to SP5. And when you right-click right on setup.exe, and choose to run it as administrator, um, even with an administrator account with antivirus turned off, firewall turned off, UAC turned off, um, you'll sometimes find that you're just met with this blank SolidWorks installation manager window with no information in it. So this actually can be pretty common, and it occurs sometimes when you're downloading the full installation media, let's say from the customer portal, or even Trimex's own file servers. Um, if you call into tech support and you need to have access to an older version of the SolidWorks Installation Manager, or maybe in the customer portal, um, 
you're locked out, you have little locks all over your customer portal, sometimes we'll send you a link so you can download the information directly from our, our file server. Um, the issue here is that when you're extracting the files, some things may uh, keep you from being able to the, extract the files properly. Properly, excuse me. So things like user permissions, um, antivirus, you know, those sorts of things, um, may not allow you to actually extract those files properly. So the resolution for this is, um, in many cases, you know, it may be a specific file. So um, sometimes we've seen that a this particular file frameset.html is problematic. So we can open the zip file that we were given from the Trimac file server from the customer portal and then we'll navigate to the SolidWorks directory inside that particular zip file. Go to sldim slash lang slash english and then underneath that folder you'll see the file frameset.html. You can right click on it, choose properties, and then just make sure that you unblock the file. After unblocking the file, extract just that single file to the local drive and include it with the rest of the un unzipped files and run the installation manager again. Everything from there should behave properly. Uh, one last note here is about graphics card support. Um, and this is particularly useful to speak about because we won't, before we actually do an upgrade, we really want to make sure that um, we have, uh, we've really thought about the upgrade process and, uh, you know, try not to get ourselves into, backed into a corner. With 2016 coming up and, you know, older hardware existing out there, it's very possible that you may have a graphics card that isn't supported in 2016. Uh, my computer, for example, I, I went to the SolidWorks graphics card uh, driver's website, uh, which is simply SolidWorks.com slash graphics cards. And I put my laptop's uh, information in here. So it's an HP laptop, EliteBook 8570W. Um, it's getting on in years, you know, but I, it's actually still a great laptop. Um, it performs just fine. Um, however, when I chose my graphics card model, the NVIDIA Quadro K2000M, which is a great graphics card, a uh, great workstation graphics card for SolidWorks, uh, I noticed that it doesn't support SolidWorks 2016 version. Um, now that doesn't mean that it, that SolidWorks won't load, it just means that it's not fully supported and if I do run into some graphic related issues um, that there's not much way that um, I can be helped. So where does this issue come from? Like why, why is it that SolidWorks 2015 doesn't support my graphics card if it's a, a great graphics card and my computer's running just fine? Well the issue comes from the fact that the SolidWorks team has finite resources. They can only test and verify a certain number of combinations of hardware, software, and driver combinations. So, um, you know, my particular hardware, the K2000M, and SOLIDWORKS 2016, and Windows 7 64-bit, that particular combination has not necessarily been tested. So, if, if that's the case, it's not actually truly supported. Um, so, in that case, um, I may be out of luck. So that's something that we really want to consider before we upgrade, because if I upgraded to 2016 right now and my graphics card wasn't supported, um, I'd be in a I'd be in a bind. So before we uh, upgrade to a new annual release, just make sure we visit the graphics card driver's website uh, to be sure we'll be fully compatible after the installation. All right, so I just wanted to do a, a quick overview of some of the errors that uh, we talked about. Um, ultimately, if you know we're confident in understanding some of these errors, we can easily uh, fix a mis misbehaving SolidWorks 2015 upgrade or even a 2014 upgrade or earlier. So um, just very quickly, we talked about the symbol library issues um, and a lot of and, and other issues that are related to that, most of which will come from a side-by-side -side configuration where you're trying to install two annual releases of SolidWorks side-by-side. -side. So let's say a 2014 and a 2015. It's really important that we make sure uh, if we're trying to run multiple installations of SolidWorks at the same time, that we designate those installation folders and toolbox folders um, by appending the year version at the end of them. That's really going to help solve a lot of those uh, errors and is a best practice. In 2015, we found that if we have a date type in our custom properties, that it may not show properly, it may not be accurate. So um, the update for that would be to um, install a later service pack of 2015. 
uh, again, I would just recommend SP4 because that actually solves issues from the next two errors that I talk about as well, which is corruption on save and incorrect cut lists um, as well. So SP4 handles the solution for all uh, three of those issues. License manager um, errors can pop up. Typically what we see is that um, the customer has upgraded their client system before they've upgraded the, the license server that serves the license to that client. So um, it, the proper way to upgrade there is to upgrade the license manager first and then client computers. And that'll resolve any issues there. Toolbox errors. We'll see this toolbox error whenever um, there's an issue installing or upgrading toolbox. Uh, the way that we fix that um, is we could do a repair install as well. I didn't mention the repair install. But you, the, another way we can do it is just to manually upgrade our toolbox to the latest version uh, using those four steps that I discussed. Windows installer errors. This is where we're going to go to our SOLIDWORKS installation FAQ website or to the knowledge base and take a look at um, what those Windows installer errors are dictating um, and what a resolution might be for those. There are many of them, um, and they all have to do with uh, Windows uh, system files and so forth. The media location error that we'll see um, sometimes uh, when we're trying to modify our SOLIDWORKS installation or upgrade our SOLIDWORKS installation to a new service pack, we'll find that it's looking for the media location um, in its original installation area. If we've, if we've downloaded the media and then deleted it after we installed, um, then that's then we'll need to download that media again and put it right back in the same location, or we can use our browse button to browse for it. If it was originally installed with a DVD, it's going to be really useful to find that DVD. Okay, if we see a blank installation manager, again, sometimes this happens when we download the information from the customer portal or from Trimex uh, servers, and there's an issue with extracting all the files properly. Typically, there will be a file in there that's, that is blocked, um, and so the re resolution there is to unblock that file and then uh, go ahead and uh, re-extract that single file, place it with the rest of the files that were already extracted, and then you're ready to go. Finally, I just spoke about graphics card support, but there's a lot of other things that we could put in this place before we upgrade. There's a lot of things to think about before we actually upgrade, like our customers and suppliers upgrading to the latest revision as well. We, SOLIDWORKS uh, files are not backwards compatible, so if I save a file to 2015, it will no longer be able to be opened in 2014 versions of SOLIDWORKS or earlier. So it's important that we, ha we consider our upgrade strategy before we actually go through with our upgrade process. One last uh, slide I want to show here were some more resources. So, um, you know, definitely your reseller, Trimec, is, is a great place to go for some information regarding these errors. You can also check out the SOLIDWORKS installation guide that's located underneath C, Program Files, SOLIDWORKS Corp, SOLIDWORKS, Lang, English, and Install Guide. Um, that's a mouthful. It's, it's actually buried in there pretty deep, but um, this, is, this is a really uh, great uh, resource to take a look at. Um, it's a pretty long PDF file, um, but it, uh, it's actually a pretty decent read. You may only fall asleep three times uh, while you're reading it. So, um, The online help is actually uh, helpful. You can get to it going to this link here, help.solidworks.com, or inside the Solid, SolidWorks, um, you can go to help and then SolidWorks help. And uh, this is a great resource for uh, information as well. SOLIDWORKS RX is uh, also uh, a useful tool that we can use. It's installed with SOLIDWORKS. So all you have to do is go to your start uh, window, all programs, uh, SOLIDWORKS 2015 or whatever year version you're running, and then SOLIDWORKS tools. Then you can just run SOLIDWORKS RX. Um, that interface looks like this. And the concept with SOLIDWORKS RX is that you can perform some diagnostics or system maintenance on um, your computer. Uh, you can see if your graphics card is supported. You can run some safe mode, so if SOLIDWORKS won't open for some reason, you can try to run SOLIDWORKS in a safe mode using SOLIDWORKS RX. If there is a problem and you'd like to, to try to capture it, um, there is a built-in video capture tool inside SOLIDWORKS RX where you can capture the issue that you're having and send that to your support um, team at uh, 888 Trimec or at support at trimec.com, and we can review that 
it'll bundle up uh, all the fi all the files, everything that's needed for us to uh, take a look at your workflow and understand uh, exactly what the problem is. So that's a really great tool as well. All right. Uh, there's also the SOLIDWORKS installation FAQ that I mentioned before. It doesn't just have information regarding the Windows installation, Windows installer errors, but it has a lot of information regarding Windows installations in general. So it takes some of the information from the installation and admin guide and kind of pairs it down to some question answer style. So it's a it's you know 10 or, 10 or 15 questions, very quick to run through. And then of course mysolidworks.com. Uh, which is a, a great resource for just searching for anything SOLIDWORKS related in this big box and hitting the big red button here. And it'll come up with information from uh, some training resources, free training resources for you, um, the SOLIDWORKS forum, the SOLIDWORKS knowledge base, um, so on and so forth. So, All right. Well, thank, uh, thank you guys for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, and if there are any questions, I can take those at this point is time. I also have my contact information here again if you did want to reach out to me via email or phone um, regarding anything SOLIDWORKS installation wise. So yeah, I get it. Uh, at this point uh, we'll just uh, take some questions. All right. Thanks, Mark. It looks like Rob has a question here. He's saying uh, sure. we have NVIDIAK 600 cards. The new version of the card is K 620. Okay. Would we need drivers for the K620 specifically or be able to use the K600 SW drivers? That is a great question. So, um, well, let's take a look at uh, the SolidWorks Graphics Card website for that. Um, so thank you for your question. First of all, one of the ways that we'll get to answer this, I, I, I don't necessarily know off the top of my head, so let's take a look. I'm going to go to SolidWorks.com slash graphics cards, okay, and there we go. Here we have it. So now in, in many cases, uh, this this top drop down is actually important. I'm going to try to zoom in my screen here so we can get a little bit better look at this on the webinar. So this top box is actually important, so if you if you do have a specific computer vendor, it's important to go ahead and grab it out of this drop-down list. Um, I actually I actually just read about this doing research for this uh, particular webinar. I didn't realize how important this box is, but actually some computer vendors like HP or Dell, um, they will use a different NVIDIA K600 card than you can just buy, let's say, if you were making your own computer or, or get from you know, Micro Center or Fry's or something like that. So it is actually important to check with your um, computer vendor drop-down. In this case, let's just assume that you've purchased your NVIDIA K620 card, um, so, you know, somewhere else. So we'll use the, the drop-down here to select any system vendor. Okay, we'll select NVIDIA for our graphics card vendor, and then for the model, we'll choose K620. All right, there we go. So notice that K600 and K620 have their own uh, selections here in this uh, drop-down box. All right. Now the SOLIDWORKS versions that are available here are 2016 and 2015, but we're we're not done yet. Let's look at 2015 and see what operating systems are supported. So we see three operating systems supported: uh, Windows 7, um, Windows 8.1, 64-bit. And I'm assuming this is Windows 7 32-bit, but that that actually is incorrect. SOLIDWORKS 2015 quick, does not Mark, support. Real quick, Mark, he's saying he has the Windows 7 64-bit. Okay, so you know, great. Sorry. So <laughs> no problem. So there we go. So if we're talking about 2015 specifically, there are actually two drivers that are going to be supported um, with the K620. So we can click on these drivers to download them, or we can look at the notes here. And we can see the full driver version uh, located here. So let's make a let's take a look at the difference between these two. Let's take a quick uh, screen grab of this guy, and we'll just uh, hang on to that for a second while we go back up here and check out the Quadro K600. Look at SolidWorks 2015 again, and Windows 7 64-bit. And we're going to look at these driver versions here. Let's take a look at a, a split screen of these two. Okay, 
So here's the difference between the K620 and the K600. So notice that there is actually uh, a commonality here. So if you do have 347.52, then that's actually supported with both of those graphics cards. The actual driver version for that, just so you know, is this uh, 9.18.134752. And um, that number co corresponds to, if you want to check if you have that driver, uh, for example, you could go and right click on my computer, go to properties, and then select device manager here. Move this out of the way. Okay. Choose device manager, and then we'll go to display adapters. And we can go to properties after right clicking on that display adapter, choose driver. And we can compare the two drivers here. Okay. So obviously these don't match up because I'm using a K2000M, but you, that's the that's the workflow for getting to uh, that driver version. Make sure those two match up with each other. All right. Um, oh, here we go. Okay. Yeah. No problem, Rob. Uh, you're absolutely welcome. So. All right. Are there any other questions out there for Mark? And just so you know, we do record um, all of our webinars. So um, if you do want to go back and check this out again, you can go to our website, trimac.com, and at the upper right-hand corner there, you will see our YouTube link. Click on that, and you should be able to find this and all of our webinars as well as all other kinds of fun stuff. How to make an Easter basket, how to make an Easter egg and crack it open. <laughs> all right. Oh, looks like we have another one here. So there's a, another question here from uh, Mr. Brian Carey, uh, client computers. Clean install or update? Clean install or update. Um, I guess let's. Uh, that's a that's a good question. So, it, Brian, if you could uh, let me know when you when you say client computers, it indicates to me that there's a that these computers are going to be network licensed. Is that correct? Okay. So, yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I. I would say with uh, with those, I mean, it really just kind of depends on on what you want to do. I, I think with client computers, the the number that you have is going to be pretty important in determining what you should do with it. There are really three good methods for um, installing uh, or upgrading for multiple computers. It's uh, just to do the standard upgrade, which uh, overwrites the previous version. So let's say you're going from 2014 to 2015. Um, what it does is the standard upgrade will um, it'll install 2015 and then it'll uninstall 2014 and put all the 2015 files in place of the 2014 files, keeping all of your settings and everything else. That's a really fast and, and quick way to do it. Um, if you're a, a little more um, you know, controlling than that, and you want to have ultimate control, you could go to each of those client computers, do a complete uninstall and reinstall of the software um, if if you would prefer to do that. But if you have enough client computers, um, maybe somewhere in the range of five to ten, I would say you may want to start looking into an admin image, and that's where you would download all of the information or, or grab it from the DVD, and you could actually um, set up the admin image to install to specific locations, uh, set up uh, specific portions of the install, and then you could just push that out to the clients over the network. Um, and you can do that silently or otherwise. And so the admin image uh, starts to make a lot of sense uh, when you do have to manage multiple client computers. So does that help answer your question, Brian, or is there something I can be a little bit more specific about?
Uh, okay, so Brian responds with, uh, what is preferred? Uh, I've had issues uh, using the update. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess it would be difficult to recommend anything without knowing what, what the issues are with the update. Is it just that the update will fail or... Um, And I, you know, I. This sounds like maybe actually could be like a kind of a, a back and forth conversation for a little while. Um, if you'd like, Brian, we can we can just talk about this uh, offline, so I can get a little bit better feel of the uh, issues you were having, and maybe we can uh, kind of work out uh, something that might be a, a preferable solution for you. Is that okay? Okay, great. Um, let me uh, let me see how I can get that. Well. Uh, Dana, do we have his email address or something so I can get in touch with uh, Brian? Yes, I will send that to you right after um, this webinar. I'll send that off to you. Okay, thank you so much, Dana. Yeah, Brian, no let's uh, let's take it offline and uh, you know hopefully I can get a little bit better feel for the issues you're running into and we can we can help solve it. So, um, are there any other questions out there? Okay. Well, I think I think we're good then. Uh, again, yep. thank you guys all for your time, and uh, really appreciate it. And um, hope you have a great afternoon. Thanks for joining us, and have a great rest of your week. Bye bye.